Hello, friends. Are your tiles limp, flaccid, having difficulty maintaining a straight angle? Boink. Then I Boink. have perhaps just the thing for you. <laughs> Wood. We're going to use these pre cut panels that I ordered off of Amazon and turn them into dungeon tiles. We are not going to use any power tools, any hot foam wire cutters, uh, no drills, no 3D printers, um, no hacksaws. We're just going to use paint, brushes, glue, and a bit of Mod Podge. Come with me and I'll show you how I did it. We're going to seal up the wood first with a trick I learned from Black Magic Craft, which is to take a jar of matte Mod Podge and add a little paint to it so you know where your coverage has been put down. It's just a friendly reminder so you know if you've missed any areas. I'm also going to add a little bit of water to the Mod Podge to thin it down. This will prevent massive brush strokes. It'll let the, the Mod Podge dry flatter. It's the same with paint. If you want your paint to dry flat and smooth, add a little bit of water. Now, we'll take a piece of chipboard that I have that I know is cut precisely to 6 inches by 6 inches. I'm going to divvy it up into 2 inch squares so that I can make a jig so that I don't have to keep redrawing curved uh, areas where I've got bends and turns and the like. But there is going to be a problem with this. Uh, it turns out that the tiles, the wooden tiles that I purchased, are only 5 and 7 eighths. So I'm actually going to be off a little bit. And unfortunately I didn't video how I fixed that problem. Essentially on the wood tiles I measured 2 inches from the sides, meaning the internal channel was only going to be at about an inch and 7 eighths instead of 2 inches. But that's okay, because it's going to be consistent across all the tiles. Next, I'm going to show you how to draw a curve without a compass. Essentially, from the center of a circle, it's equidistant to the edge of the circle. So all I need to do is put down a few marks. Uh, at two inches, since this is going to be a two inch curve, from the corner of the chipboard. So I'll just lay down a few marks and then connect the dots. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the center square so that I get the inside curve for a turning bend. I also measured out a two inch grid, well, two inches from the outside on the wooden tiles. That way the center uh, channel would be one and seven eighths inch wide. And then I could align my little cardboard jig here to those lines and make sure that the curves were in the right place and that I was maintaining that center channel width. Now it's time to start base coating the sewage muck. I grabbed a bottle of Hunter Green and Navy. I am using uh, Craftsmart paints, not because I'm endorsed by anyone, but because it's available to me. I'm going to do a 50-50 mix of the hunter green in the navy and add a little few drops of water to help thin the paint.
I make sure to apply a second coat to get better coverage and on some of the tiles I add a little bump out to them so that when I go to paint the stone tiles I can show where some of the stone has been damaged and broken away just to break up some of those straight lines because straight lines are boring. Now we're going to paint the next layer. We're going to grab some olive green and we're going to paint a web. It's the mid-level refractions of light deeper in the water below the surface. Fortunately, you don't have to paint any straight lines. It's just going to be a bunch of blobs. Painting is all about blobs. It's just a matter of knowing what color blob and where to put it. First, I'm going to paint along the edges, and you notice it's not particularly neat, not particularly straight. You don't have to be. It's water. Water is not made up of straight lines. When you get to the edge of the board, pay attention to how you're doing your web. I like to keep an opening at the edges of each tile for this particular layer so that it always matches up to the next tile. Then you just start drawing some random circular blobs, uh, just some outlines, and then we're going to fill in the gaps between afterward. On the bump outs, I fill them in a bit more, as that's where the scum is really going to accumulate. For the top layer, we're going to use some Spanish olive, which is a lighter olive color, and we're going to do another webbing. This one's going to be a little bit more fine, and we are purposefully going to not match the webbing we've already painted. We want to make it look different on this layer. So we're going to break up that image of the webbing we've already painted with another webbing over it. Also on the edges of the tile, we're going to divide the channel in half so that it connects as two bubbles to the next uh, tile, not one bubble like we did with this particular layer. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now my paint is getting a little old, so occasionally when I squeeze out some measures, uh, some dried chunks get stuck in the paint. 
And it's always good to brush and scoop those out so that they don't wind up on your product. And here I am marking the center line and I'm going to draw in the two bubbles that are going to transition to the next tile. See how I'm purposefully breaking up the previous webbing with the new webbing so that they don't match. Otherwise, I'm just covering up the old webbing. The goal here is that we want the water to feel like it's got multiple layers, like it's got depth. I mean, we're working in two dimensions here. We gotta fake it where we can. Squiggly blobs, squiggly blobs. This particular video is running a little long, so a second video will be put out where we paint up the stones. It's probably nice to keep them separate. That one someone can look up a specific technique if they want. So the next video will be painting the stones and sealing the product. And it's already shot, so as soon as I edit it and do the voiceover, I'll be able to post it. Look for it soon. Now to crank up the grossness, scum bubbles. We're gonna use a little bit of lime green and we're going to paint in some nastiness to it. Just some dots speckled here and there, usually where two bubbles join, that sort of conjunction, because that's where those, those scum bubbles are gonna get pushed to. Try not to make them in a regular pattern or evenly spaced. Keep them as random as possible. And don't overdo too many scum bubbles. If you'd like to make it look even more gross, you could grab some, I don't know, brown paint and paint things floating in the muck. But I have a very juvenile group, and rather than spend one hour giggling at the brown objects floating in the sewer, I just left them off. But, you know, you could put in planks of wood, things, eyeballs peering up from the deep, whatever you want. And the best part is, I can always add those afterward if I feel a mind to do.
This is what our tile set looks like so far. We've got our water painted. Next time, we'll be painting the stone. I'd like to give a special thanks to DM Scotty, the DMG Info, Black Magic Craft, and Wylock's Armory for inspiring me to do more crafting on my own. Dungeon Craft for the ultimate dungeon terrain, which is an awesome idea, and I will cover it later with my own version. And finally, the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook that, well, they, they sort of asked me to start my own YouTube channel on painting. They liked what they saw. So if you're looking for someone to blame, these are the people. So if you liked what you see, hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much.